So with, with that, I, I'm bringing Maurizio Don Vito, and I think my colleague is joining me for that uh, as, as well. Um, just bear a moment, Martina, to come back in. Maurizio, thanks for, for bearing with us and into your lunch break. And I know you, you're joining us from your holiday, which uh, I know there's no nicer time to spend than with us in this conference, but, but uh, hopefully you can get back out again after this. But I think it's really important, and I think the point just raised at the end uh, by Tom about, you know, the material, financial versus environmental or non-financial materiality and how the two things fit together is, is so important. So um, with that, maybe just for the audience, it might be helpful. Um, what is actually the European Contact Group? Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon, uh, Nicolas, and good afternoon to the audience. Uh, it has been a, a pleasure and honor to be invited to this workshop, and I'm quite pleased to cut out some uh, time of my holiday for attending this, uh, this event. What, what uh, the European Contact Group is? Well, uh, the European Contact Group is a group that brings together the six uh, <coughs> largest network professional on professional services in Europe. BDO, Deloitte, ENY, Grant Thornton, KPMG, and PwC. Uh, the members of the ECG are uh, networks that are independent and locally owned uh, in, uh, in, in each uh, firm in, in the European countries. And they bring uh, uh, together uh, collectively in Europe uh, more, almost 300,000 people, employees, uh, operating in 1,300 offices and, and location in general, and uh, through more than 300 uh, offices in Europe. So it's quite a large community. Thank you, Maurizio. And I think you come at a very timely moment of our of our workshop because the the perspective which we maybe miss is the one from of the the assurance uh, and the the auditors uh, side. Uh, before coming to to the specificities of the uh, the, the assurance part of the CSRD, um, we we spoke so far about you know the the main points uh, of the proposal, the um, the challenges for businesses. What, how do you see the outcome of the political process uh, and the, uh, the, final, the final CSRD agreement? Well, we, I, I, I speak uh, collectively because we have discussed uh, uh, in the, over these months uh, several times, as you can imagine, about CSRD. We would like to uh, congratulate with the EU decision makers and the French presidency about uh, the agreement reached uh, uh, recently on the CSRD. Uh, the, the CSRD is a cornerstone in, on the uh, sustainability journey for, uh, at the European level, and uh, it's a critical step forward for uh, all the stakeholders and, and also including the investors. The message is, I th we think, is quite clear. We need transparent, comparable, uh, trustworthy, uh, sustainable reporting, and uh, because these type of information are uh, on, on sustainability are becoming vital for the capital market and uh, 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 focusing only on uh, financial result is, is no longer enough for the market. But now it's uh, fundamental to have uh, high quality reporting standard and robust uh, assurance uh, uh, standards. And we welcome particularly the IWASB initiative of uh, developing a bespoke uh, uh, sustainability assurance standard, which is going to be largely based on the current international uh, standard of on assurance uh, engagement. So the machine is moving now from, uh, from a technical point of view. And, and maybe building on that, Maurizio, just how do you envisage uh, the assurance to work in the ESG context? You've, you know from the financial services, uh, from financial side, financial figures, but, but here we talk much more about estimates, certain elements of judgment, quantitative and qualitative data coming together. So how, how do you see that evolve? Well, the, the, the audit profession, I would say, uh, uh, in the world, but in particular in Europe, and the audit in, within the audit profession, I would like to include, obviously, the ECG networks, uh, uh, has, uh, uh, the profession has uh, expert and audit skills, which are 
reasonably transferable to the ESG uh, assurance uh, type of work. So, in, in other words, uh, the, 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 the profession in Europe is ready to play its role in the uh, uh, change uh, of uh, uh, the type of reporting, the extension of the reporting to the sustainability information. Uh, um, the, the assurance that is requested over sustainability uh, is based on uh, already existing fundamental skills uh, of uh, the audit practice uh, in, in Europe uh, in general and professional skepticism, uh, capacity of gathering evidence, uh, analyzing a large amount of data uh, and uh, being able to um, uh, manage all this process in an ind independent manner uh, with independent requirements are part of uh, the background, the cultural background of uh, typical background of the of the auditor. We would like to welcome uh, the, uh, the decision to allow companies to appoint statutory auditor to provide assurance over sustainability. And we, we consider that important because we see an increasing interconnectivity between financial and non-financial information. When I say non-financial information, I refer to sustainability information. Obviously, we are in favor and we support uh, uh, the uh, opening of uh, the, uh, to the market assurance provider uh, the, uh, the possibility to uh, uh, provide assurance over sustainability uh, and uh, we also particularly welcome the fact that uh, the, this assurance provider will be uh, um, subject to equivalent uh, requirements like uh, uh, the uh, statutory auditor. In fact, it is important to we think that the stakeholders will be in a position to rely on uh, a consistent level of quality of uh, the assurance provider or provided over the sustainability. Um, we, I heard that in previous comments the risk of green greenwashing. Or, uh, we think that the greenwashing is it's a concrete risk, maybe often inadvertent greenwashing, <laughs> given the complexity of, uh, of the legislation. So uh, we think that uh, providing assurance over the ESG, uh, uh, um, it's, uh, it's an important step forward to provide trust uh, uh, by the readers over the, uh, the information provided uh, in, in the non-financial reporting. Um, my last consideration is that uh, uh, assurance over uh, 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 sustainability information has been provided already for several years. I would say in some cases, even a couple of decades in, in Europe by the accounting profession. So although the exercise now is much more complete and complex, uh, I have to say that uh, uh, it's something that is not completely new to the profession. Um, thank you, Maurizio. I think um, you mentioned a couple of very good points about, you know, the, the implementation, the risk of greenwashing and the role that the CSRD will play in kind of helping um, avoiding these type of risks. Um, do you see maybe going back to the broader um, proposal, to the broader legislative text, do you see any major challenges that, that companies would you know, face in the next uh, in the next years in terms of timeline, in terms of I don't know reporting standards. Uh, what's your view on this? Well, uh, this is uh, my view is reflecting the internal discussion we had and also the several comments we are starting to receive uh, from uh, the market and the stakeholders, which is uh, uh, for the first uh, wave of implementation of the new requirements, uh, which is 2024, the, rel the relatively uh, short time frame for the uh, adoption and implementation of uh, the requirements for corporates. So corporates are on the front line to make sure that uh, they can apply uh, the new requirements by 2024. And the only way that uh, uh, this process can be and the goal can be achieved is through a, a, a cooperation uh, uh, between uh, the entire reporting ecosystem. And when I, I talk about uh, ecosystem, I refer to companies, board of directors, auditors, standard setters, investors, and supervisors. 
So they need to come together to uh, address the inevitable uh, difficulties in, in implementation, in the interpretation and implementation of uh, the uh, requirements. For auditors, uh, I talk about uh, the corporate side. For auditors, obviously, the, 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 the issue, uh, the, the, the goal is to build uh, uh, delivery capacity. So uh, we need to um, uh, train our people and reinforce our structure for uh, uh, the, uh, the significant amount of work that uh, will be requested to provide assurance over the additional sustainability and therefore non-financial information. Um, my last, uh, I would like to uh, address the last uh, challenge I see is that uh, uh, the requirements appears to be complex and granular, which is perfectly fine, considering the importance of the goal that we want to achieve, the Commission and, and Europe in general wants to achieve. Maybe could be a good uh, 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 setup, try to be at, at, at first less complex and granular and having the capacity building over, uh, over time to be able to uh, address uh, the complexity of, of the new requirements over time. So being a bit less complex and granular in the first few years and, and build up in following years much more granularity and complexity. Thank you very much, Mauricio. And just maybe finally, do you have a final message, something that you would leave or send to the policymakers based on what you heard well, today? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, uh, the auditability of uh, the, uh, the sustainability information uh, depends on the existence of a robust internal control system, which uh, is uh, uh, a very important, uh, which is similar as a requirement, as you can imagine, over the auditability of the financial information. So uh, the clarification of the responsibilities of the management and the supervisory board, uh, and also the duty of the audit committee uh, that uh, are requested to oversee the process is, is a good step forward to, to uh, create a, a robust uh, framework under which the auditor can move and provide assurance. Uh, last but not least is something that uh, I always <laughs> repeat, I've repeated in the last 18 months is that CCR, the, 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 the sustainability information, the reporting in general, is, uh, is a thermometer, is a window over what uh, the companies are doing over sustainability. But I, uh, we shouldn't spend too much energy and, or too, con too much concern over the reporting uh, at the corporate level. But uh, I think that corporates should uh, focus first on planning activities and implementing these plans. Otherwise, the reporting over and over through the years will report the same picture, which is going to be a picture of a business potentially not sufficiently sustainable in, uh, and not sufficiently in line with the, the European uh, uh, expectations. So um, less, we should all be try to be less uh, concerned about the reporting and be more concerned about uh, implementing action, I think. I think that that's a really nice closing word, which, because it was really a common theme today was, was the role of governance, the role that, that you, can, you know, needs to be a learning exercise. It needs to lead to improvements, to rethinking ESG criteria and everything that's being done in the company. And therefore, as you say, if, if, if every year it's just a box ticking exercise reporting exactly the same information, then you know you will over time lose shareholder value because people will start to realize that. So, so it needs to be kind of an improving process. Uh, therefore, it was as always wise to kind of close with you because it was nicely coordinated, even though we didn't coordinate it at all. It worked very well. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thanks for uh, sending you off to your holiday again. I think for me, the last thing to say is just a big thank you to the F4 team, in particular Martina but, and uh, her colleagues, uh, to our technical team here, which have done a great job, uh, and obviously, most importantly, to the uh, speakers and the participants and those who asked questions. I hope you found it really interesting. We certainly did. Uh, watch out, as I say, we will do something in September on a global level uh, and we will come back to different aspects of the sustainability theme. Uh, it's here to stay.
Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Have a nice lunch. Thanks for bearing with us until this time. And uh, hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Bye.